Uh, hi, this is Neil Creswell. I have Elshin here from Zealous Watches, and he's bought a huge bag, custom bag, uh, full of goodies to look at. So um, I don't know which one we should be looking at first, but it's really kind of exciting to see so many watches. And we cheated. I had a good look at each one first already. Um, so I was personally really taken with the high dome ones that you have. The um, uh, Was it this one that was the... So... We have the hammerheads, hammerheads, and the hammerheads and the abyss, because this is you said it was like twenty millimeters or so, but it's got a really nice dome shape on it. Um, so I was really just liking the look of these, and then you also have the um, new helmsman, right? As well, that's a oh, yes. helmsman. Helmsman, because I really like this one. It's almost like a dress watch, uh, but you. Uh, and, and, water resistant, so. yeah. and you've got the screw down, not just mm -hmm. the screw down crown, um, but you actually have, have the screw down um, bezel, mm -hmm. uh, so it's an inner bezel. But I like that it's really easy to move, it clicks so you just know each minute, so you don't have to read the, out, you know, the minute markers, I can just feel it actually. And when you stop, if you push it in, it doesn't move at all, so I've stayed in position. That's really nicely done. Very smooth, screwed down. Just two two turns and I'm tight. Because the other ones I have, I screw oh, them yeah. down. And, and, you, and we're talking tomorrow. about the day they go off. And it's mm -hmm. a double-signed crown. So um, that looks like it's loomed as well. Mm -hmm. Which crowns. is part of your, I guess, <laughs> trademark, right? So this is a full loom. Uh, so it's like a reverse loom. The, the background oh, yes. is loomed. That's right. Well, that's going to look awesome at night, and you've got a sunburst effect, and this is a, can't quite tell because we haven't got good light in the hotel room here, but it's like a dark blue. Oh, yes, uh, very dark. Midnight blue yeah. or something. Well, that looks really nice. I love the curves on this, it's and obviously a it's in... CNC case. Yeah, so it's inset, mm -hmm. and that's brushed, and that's polished. Really love the curves on that. That's going to come out really nicely. And then I'm not, I won't take this off because I know these are new watches, but um, uh, I guess a ship's wheel uh, as a pattern on the back. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I, I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and you, but you surprised me earlier. We were talking and we are talking about different features and a few things that surprised me. One of those, you have a three kilometer or 3,000 meter oh, yes, yes. rated abyss. watch with the abyss with like, I think you said it was like seven or eight millimeter thick gl uh, oh, yes. glass on it. Mm -hmm. And that's this one. This one, this one here. Yeah, well, this is this is really cool. It's also got a screw down. Is that the outer bezel that's screwed down? Uh no, the inner bezel as well. Inner bezel. So it's got an inner bezel too. It's got oh, a wow. twelve-hour inner bezel. Oh, really so cool. you could use it as a kind of a poor man's GMT. Oh uh, yes, sort of. Yeah, that's really cool. Helium escape valve, so, which is actually nicely finished. The right. Inner bezel. Yeah. Escape. This is the regular outer yep. bezel. So you've got those ah, bezels. You've just solved something for me. Because uh, I'm wearing a watch now that mm -hmm. basically has uh, it's a tw it's a GMT full GMT, but I, it's unidirectional bezel. You use it as a timer, and it just never is quite right. It's a GMT. It's kind of awkward. Is that two hours, four hours, six <laughs> hours? You have to think. <laughs> And then as a, a timer, once you've gone past a certain number of minutes, I have to then do the maths. I'm on 12, that's 6, so that's, you know, <laughs> it's, so that's, it's that's 30 minutes, you know. So it's, it's definitely confusing, mm -hmm. but now you've got both. So you could use that as a GMT, just turn it up at an angle and mm -hmm. you have a look inside. And mm -hmm. yet you can also use it as a totally separate timer mm -hmm. while you're on a GMT that trip. Because if you're using this style GMT, mm -hmm. the one I'm wearing, you can't use it as a timer when you're <laughs> using it as a GMT. Minutes. It's just no good. It, um, so mm -hmm. that's really quite... I didn't even know that about your watches, so I just learned something new. And, um, yeah, I just love that. I'm getting to see these with the new bronze for the first time as well. And I'm sorry about the light in here. It's oh. just a hotel room. <laughs> but um, th that's awesome. And then you also have... Um, I know people wanted to see the skeleton... Oh, we've got this. Let's go uh, through the other one. Dan? Dan wanted to see Dan wanted Dan. <laughs> that's right. Dan did. And now I'm really loving this because... Uh, I'm loving it more from the side because you've got all these edges on it. You've got uh, two layers of edging. Mm -hmm. very, so you've got brushed and then you've got a very slight angle, mirror polished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really cool. But um, well, that's a very nice movement, not too heavy. And I'm 
bit short sighted. The movement on the back is. Seiko and it's straight. Yeah. And then you, it looks like you've got a couple of uh, fish at play. Uh, uh, sharks? Hammerhead, hammerhead, hammerhead uh, yes. sharks. Yeah. Nicer than just one. You actually see them. <laughs> so, the one of the special movement is this one, if you want to have a look. Yep, definitely. Oh, we were talking about this earlier, and I didn't even, I don't think I've ever even seen a watch with this movement, because normally you're going to get <laughs> an well, H35 or a Solita or an ETA or something, but this, uh, so this is a voucher. The Richard Mille retails for like 100,000, so. <laughs> wow. You couldn't tell from this side, but it's a really interesting movement. And you only have two of these in each color. Uh, two uh, hammerheads and two helmsmen. Two hammers, two helmsmen. So um, I think somebody who likes movements is going to really <laughs> love this. Um, it'll be interesting to mm -hmm. see uh, if, if those, how those do. When are you going to make them available? Uh, well, that's a tough question. <laughs> Maybe you do it just privately to the uh, existing people who buy your watches, or uh, not too sure yet. No. So still, still in limbo. Still up in the air. <laughs> well, that's okay. Something we'll just have to watch out for. But it's yeah. definitely a different movement at the back. Mm -hmm. One I'm not, one I've not seen before actually, in a, and it's in a micro brand too. So that's pretty awesome. Ah, oh, it's just too many nice things here. <laughs> so uh, got your titanium limits. Yeah, oh, well, we haven't talked about the um, one thing I really like looking at your watches. I mean, it's a really nice custom titanium, uh, you know, even just the uh, the way that it's actually shaped. Not chamfered is the wrong word, right? When you have it shaped like this, mm -hmm. but I really like the one thing you have on these watches that so many don't is this diver's extension clasp. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have it slightly loose or slightly tighter, like if you were, I, what I do with my watches, I try and get. A diver's extension clasp, and it's almost impossible to get one stop. Mm -hmm. So you can just press it in, pull it out, and let go wherever you want. And it's don't even have to remove it exactly. Keep it on your wrist and do that. Because I like it loose when I'm working mm -hmm. at my desk. So oh. I get sweaty or moving my arm around or have it higher up my arm. But when I'm exercising, I don't want it wiggling around. Oh, yeah. Or if I'm out hiking or something, especially if it's such a heavy watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or well, this doesn't feel heavy at all. Well, it's because it's titanium, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, but if this was the stainless version, oh, I yeah, guess it would be pr uh, pretty meaty. <laughs> um, but I just love this, you know, you've got the normal clasp function with with the lock down there, but the diver's extension is something really nice. So that's the lock down, and this is the diver's. I had it back to front. There we go. So it just clicks into place. Much better than a micro-level adjustment. So you get it so it's tied on your wrist, mm -hmm. and then you just loosen it to where you want it to be. Anytime. So, yeah, I mean, I know that's supposed to be for going over a wetsuit, mm -hmm. but most of us um, don't dive. Most guys, yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I've never been diving, but I almost exclusively wear divers, and it's mm -hmm. a, got a dress function or something I'm going to. That's really awesome, and I'm, I'm just loving that about the uh, bracelets that you have. And then you have a few other things that are interesting, um, too. Yes. Um, skeletons. Uh, skeleton pilots is, is rich. So this is one that we've been talking about a lot in the Kickstarter group privately on chat. I think you've had it posted in a few other places. Mm -hmm. So you've got the skeleton, but what I didn't really realize when you had the skeleton here, which is a nice skeleton movement, and I know it's going to be expensive because that's all it's custom, a, yeah, custom, custom cut. Custom decorator, yeah. uh, 619. Yeah. Uh, so it's a nice, nice movement. You've even got um, Zelos branding on the actual movement itself. Mm -hmm. Hand wound, of course, but what I really like when you get hand round, this is like two for the price of one. This is what I really love in watches when they're hand round. A large, wide hand mm -hmm. round, so you can see what's going on. Not and when you've got a completely open back here, I just love that. I'd probably be taking this off, <laughs> off my wrist if I was owning this and looking at the back more than the front even. So I love the skeleton one, but you have a halfway house oh, that's... Yes. Uh, uh, this one, which comes in a blue and a black, right? Are there other colors you're going to do? Um, so far, no. Just uh, meteorite as well. Meteorite, yeah. yeah. So, um, so you've got the same kind of pattern as on the Mako, but ah, yes. just larger. So it won't pick up very well. But you, or you can see it's a very nice sunburst effect that's actually picking up on the patterns like a spinning propeller wheel almost. But you've got a, a very nice patterning on both of those. With the... 
Interesting, the uh, second hands that you've got in the subdial there. Hands are all custom. Yeah, it's, I was noticing that at the back of the hands, it's very open. Um, but you've still, the thing I really like about this on both of those is you have the movement exposed again. It's the same uh, 618, uh, just not nice. Yeah. I not really, affordable that way. <laughs> I really like that. So we can't talk about pricing it because you're not sure, so it's unfair. But um, just getting a good first look at these, I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> I was supposed to be not shopping for myself. My wife said, don't you dare buy any watches when you're out, when you're out in Singapore. But, well, uh, but, but she doesn't know this because she never watches my reviews. But now I'm probably going to be adding this to my shopping list when it comes out. So um, uh, maybe is your meteorite going to be a, uh, um, you've got two color meteorites, mm -hmm. right? You've got a black meteorite dial oh, and a and a, and a dark one. I actually really like the dark ones. I bought a few dark yeah, ones already. Oh yeah, the Marco is a dark one. Oh yeah, I actually have one of your watches in, in my bag. So just a sec, I'll get, I'll get that out. Right. That, that's why I didn't bring any. Yeah, actually, I knew actually, you had that. This isn't yours. Am I allowed to show someone else's? Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. But it's a black dark meteorite sure. dial. It's very similar. I'll put my finger if you can't see who. There we go. <laughs> For anybody who knows what, everybody who knows microbrand watches will know exactly what this is. So this is one of my own personal watches with a black meteorite dial, and this is m more of a silvery grey meteorite dial. Yeah, cool. It goes well with uh, titanium and stainless, yeah. um, and often you do black with bronze because mm -hmm. bronze becomes darker. I just really like the black. Um, I mean, they both work really nicely. It's just a personal taste. But yeah, getting getting another meteorite on the front with the open movement at the back. And the power reserve is something like 50 hours? Uh, I'll say around 40. 40, 40 hours. So that's, that's not too bad. I mean, as long as you go you know, 30 hours plus, so people... Just probably have to wind it every day. Just wind it every day. <laughs> you, you have people on a schedule, they get up in the morning, they wind it, or just before they go to sleep, uh -huh. they wind it. Um, and I just, you know, because a hand, hand wound is obviously more critical than an automatic, but it's mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. The crown is very accessible. Screw down crown. Oh, no. No, because you have to wind it every day, so yeah. I don't think you want to... So, so, so this is a 50-meter water reading? No, uh, 100. A hundred would. Now that's unusual because normally, even with a couple of gaskets, if it's not screwed down, fifty oh, meters is the limit. Possible. Still, still possible. possible. So you've just done some interesting engineering <laughs> there behind the scenes. Just a few gaskets. You know. Yeah, to a double gasket. Ah oh, yes. Okay, so it clicks out nicely. Obviously, that's the adjustment. There's no date on it, so it's a single click out. So really, it just winds from the just spot. Winds and and Just it will get tighter as you get towards it. I only wind it uh, a little. Yes, once you reach the maximum, you'll stop. Yeah, I like to go slow when I'm well, first time I'm using a movement I'm not used to. Um, this is uh, ETA? 648. 649. Well, you've got a 6497. The only difference is the subdial at the 9 o'clock. Yeah, subdials are nice. Are you going to. Yeah, so if you did a meteorite. Right, and you had a main meteorite face. What do you? The subdial has to be meteorite too. Uh, you haven't made your mind no, up. No, just a regular. Just for contrast, something oh, yes. different. So you're going to have that cut out in the mm -hmm. meteorite. That's right. Um, that sounds really interesting. Uh, I'm I'm curious <laughs> about that now. And you're going to do bronze. And I look at. I mean, yeah, I know that you're still playing. This is not a final mm -hmm. design, but mm -hmm. normally when you get lugs, they're solid. But these are actually open so, lugs. Sort of skeleton lugs, but um, yeah, they won't be for the final though. Because yeah. uh, finishing on them, it's too difficult. Pity. <laughs> <laughs> Pity, because this is like, it just, I mean, also, I just think it makes it so different. Uh, yeah, I can see finishing would be awkward and... Uh, A lot of holes that have yeah, to get into yeah. And your hand polishing, you can't get a tool in there, can you, to finish oh, yes. on the inside? And people can see the inside from, from the outside. But it looks really gorgeous. So I guess that's you're going to keep that personally? And This one, not too sure. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Um, so we looked at those. And then the other ones uh, that we looked at that were interesting were the um, chronographs, mm -hmm. right? This one, oh, here we go. So we have so a Kickstarter project in yeah. January. So uh, there was uh, one I really liked, the functional wise. You had two different colors on the. Um, oh, this. Uh, that was it. Yeah, to me, I find this kind of thing really practical. Just if when you have more than th 
when you have uh, a chronograph, one of the subdials is the second hand. Obviously, you know, but when you wear a lot of different watches and you rotate your watches, is it the one on the left? Is it the one on the right? You know, you're just trying to remember, but you've got the matching up with the bronze on the case for the bronze subdial. I just knew that was the seconds without even looking at it, it to see if it was moving. So my eye was just drawn there. But I, I really love how you do your pushes on these. The pushes are awesome. Um, and obviously this is a prototype, so it's yeah. a little bit stiff. But it, it yeah, it's nice. So this is a 7750, mm -hmm. right? Um, Resets so nicely. And so is this one. So this will be something close to the final. With, uh, oh, look at the finishing on that. Grade, custom rotor. The rotor is uh, being changed already. So. That is a nice rotor, a little bit more decorated. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always get the phrasing wrong. Is it cut? Did you need? You can probably tell oh, me that. For the rotor? Yeah, no, uh, not for the rotor, for the, oh, for the, the plate. plate is. Uh, I'm not wrong, it's per large. People can laugh at me. Uh, just <laughs> per large. See, I, you see, I'm just the average amateur guy who doesn't know the right terms. Um, but, oh, wow, we haven't even talked about the case here. So, this is, this is really exciting because it's. Um, <laughs> I mean, I just love the blue and that. The blue and. Blue and purple. The way so, you've got the lines really nicely balanced. So uh, this case is made of uh, titanium Damascus. Basically, you've got two different titanium. Damascus, right? Oh, yes, Damascus. Oh, that's what people so, are calling it now. So two different alloy titaniums, they fuse it together. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get your line from. It's, uh, the lines are not like engraved or anything. It's just a, it's just a material itself. Yeah, it feels lighter as well because it's titanium, of course. Um, but the rest are all titanium as well. Yeah, but I just love this. Uh, how many of these do you have? Or um, I'm doing twenty of them. When are they available? Uh, around September. So these are the only uh, Time Hiskers watches in the world. Oh wow! Uh, are All you? The brand has done them. Okay. One one of the things I don't talk about or haven't talked about much yet is I'm also buying watches for a watch store oh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's course. launching soon. So. Uh, I'd love to buy. <laughs> I'm gonna buy yeah, some of these. Very um, pricey, though. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it's not just that they're pricey, but they're also very unique. I mean, I love this color combination. It's just awesome. And yeah, and what what have you got on the inside there for the case? It's just a very rich mm -hmm. color, just a dark black. You mean the dial? Uh, the dial. Sorry, oh, yes. yes. The dial. See, I yeah, used the, the wrong word again. Uh, black with uh, loom subdials. Yeah. So, oh, full loom. So it's blue, reverse blue. loom. Blue. So, um, BGW, no? BGW, which is one of my favorites. So, Super Luminova. Um, I do like that. And it's kind of an old style patterning on the dial, mm -hmm. or sub dials. Very nice. And you've got the, tuck, uh, yeah, you've got the, the marks on the ins, uh, oh. chapter ring, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah, that's really nicely done. I just love this case. I'd definitely be interested in buying a few, but I don't know if you're willing to sell them because I think you'll just sell out directly oh, really rather than yeah. yeah. But if you have any, have any, if you have any left over, let me know because because yeah, I, I would definitely be down for some. Yeah. That's for so, sure. If if you want something unique, this one as well. I um, I just made five of them. Five, is, and it's also open. It's um, a full skeleton seven seven fifty. Skeleton seven seven fifty. Now I don't think I heard of many of those. Yeah. Can flip it on the back. You can see even more. Oh, look at that! That rotor looks a bit light. Does it get uh, stuck sometimes? Uh -huh. yeah. oh, no worries. It, uh, no, no, it, it it sits if you put it up at the right angle. Wow, you get to see a lot on the back. Um, I love chronograph movements when they're open at the back. The front on this is really nice too. I don't often go for skeletons, mm -hmm. but this is one I would... Actually, it looks really nice. It's got a lot of color to it as well from the different parts. Lots of things going on and moving fast to start the timer going on this. And I probably bought all these in a case, huge case. I don't know if you wound them all before coming. And <laughs> well, I put, well, fingerprint, well, well, my, I put <laughs> my dirty fingerprints over everything too. Well, it's okay. All but, prototypes. Yeah. yeah, wow. Just watching everything move and then it's going to flip back. Yeah the reset so these are really nice but I the Tamascus I'm just sold on the case <laughs> you doing anything else in Tamascus in um, I have a hammerhead in production so but that's, that will be 
the ladder probably like August maybe. Mm-hmm. And without talking properly about prices, but like if, if somebody wanted to go to Damascus on something and they know the retail price that you're selling it for, typically that's an extra hundred or hundred and fifty, oh, or because no, they're, they're hard to make, aren't they? Right? There's the, a lot of effort involved. Uh, production is hard. The uh, other yeah. problem is the material cost. So one bar of material, or one kilogram of material, is about. Almost two thousand US dollars. Mm, mm. So compare that to stainless steel yeah. or even titanium. So it's not like five. an extra hundred or hundred and fifty <laughs> for a meteorite. It's going to cost um, more than that. Yeah. At least you're go- going to say like double, triple, yeah. even. So yeah. so for for this one is for a Kickstarter was around two thousand US dollars. Mm-hmm. So which is probably a bit out of Kickstarter price range. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, but people who like those watches are just it was it was the same price as the SR seventy one piece. Yeah, I've just totally fallen for the uh, case on it. So this so is... I these think are all actually heated by hand. So you take a blowtorch to it, heat it long enough, the colour will change. You've got to get that just right though. Oh uh, yeah. So and it's got to be uniform on one side compared to the other. Heat it slowly across the whole case. So. Wow. So a lot of work goes into these watches. I don't think sometimes people don't don't realise, especially when you do any kind of dim, uh, Damascus, right? Damascus, Damascus. They're yeah. all very expensive materials very expensive and a lot of labor involved as well um wow oh this is exciting <laughs> i know both of us are shy about the camera so i'll probably whip that off but um let's make sure we covered all the all the fun stuff um oh, any that any that we missed there this that's the blackbird oh yeah yeah and you also had a spitfire one as well oh, spitfire was this one yeah so this was so this was interesting the the case i, I really loved the Subdial the fact functionality wise I could just tell immediately and also you've got a sunburst effect on the on the dial subdial rings, but um, to have a piece of a Spitfire um, and you've got, you've got it you know polished off the paint, oh, yeah. but because you left it with a rough finish, it's almost like the same kind of illustrations on a uh, what am I thinking? Oh, meteorite. Oh, a meteorite. It's mm-hmm. it's similar, so it's got a really nice texture to it. If, if, raw. Yeah, 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 I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, but you only have this as a one-off, so oh, it's probably, yeah, probably not for sale, one. right? Yeah. yeah. Or is it for sale if somebody gets in touch? Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> it's a one-off. I wouldn't. Yeah. You like you, you collect watches too, right? So, oh. what, I could have asked, what do you normally wear out of all? Your, do you wear your own watch? Uh, I would think. I have so many shoes from. You just know? change every day, <laughs> yeah. whatever you're wearing. I, I don't really have other brands, so I yeah. have so many on my own already. So. Yeah, so this is the Blackbird SR71, oh, yes, which is like super fast spy plane. Uh, so, the, this is the actual paint, the actual finish of the material. It's actually from the engine nozzles. Wow, so that's why it kind of looks like very, it's been blasted. Uh-huh. Very raw, very rugged. That's really cool. Uh, you've got a nice grey effect to it. Titanium. Titanium. And then you've actually picked a really good colour strap. It's a very soft strap too. One of the <laughs> softest. That's something I had at home. Yeah, but it, it, it you matched it pretty well. I noticed you matched the straps well always with huh. the stuff that you do. And then just, it's a fairly standard undecorated movement, right? Yeah, it's a prototype. So okay. the movement will be similar to the other one. This full decoration, yeah, you've got. definitely makes a difference. But the one I'm really liking, the back of the seven seven fifties on, uh, where the, are we? These ones. Oh, yeah, the six four nine. Six four nine. Sorry, because it's the hand wound is just, you know, even if people are used to, I I actually own some hand wounds, and I mm-hmm. I normally wear automatics. I don't have to wire. I just. Uh, touch them up every few days just to make sure if I've not been very active mm-hmm. or if I'm walking every day then, then I don't bother doing that but um, hand wound is really not an issue when, when you, as long as it's easy to wind not one of those nice dri- dress brown, ones can yeah. be awkward but this one has a good grip it sticks yeah. out far enough very easy and then you've got this huge advantage on the back yeah. uh, of seeing everything that's going on yeah I really like that Okay, well, I really appreciate showing the watches, and I'll get this off because we've been running almost 25 minutes here, and I don't want to bore people. I just love watches. But thanks ever so much.